Hi everyone, my name is Brett Drummond. I'm here with another multiple sclerosis research summary video. Before I get started, just a reminder, if you haven't already, click on the subscribe button below the video to make sure that you get access to all of the MS Translate videos as soon as they're published. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about a new study that was published recently in the Journal of Neurology, and you can access that study by clicking the link in the description. Also, if you prefer to read a text summary, we have written an article that is published on the MS Translate website, and the link to that summary is also included in the description of the video. So this research was published out of the Northwestern University uh, in Chicago in the United States. And the title of the paper is Real World uh, Application of Autologous Hematopoietic Stem Cell Transplantation in 507 Patients with Multiple Sclerosis. So we've talked a lot before about AHSCT or that autologous hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. If you'd like an updated summary of what that treatment is, comment below and we'll make sure that we record a video on that. But just briefly, this is a uh, potential new treatment for people living with multiple sclerosis that essentially works by having chemotherapy wipe out the existing immune system, and then there's a bone marrow transplantation. Now, at the moment, with the A part of the AHSCT, what this means is that it's the person's own bone marrow that gets taken out and then transplanted back in. So this isn't coming from a separate donor. So in terms of this study, what they looked at was that they basically uh, took a large group of people living with multiple sclerosis. Now, these were people with both relapsing, remitting multiple sclerosis and secondary progressive multiple sclerosis. And there were also people who had failed a number of existing treatments beforehand. On average, participants in this trial had failed up to four treatments uh, before being recommended uh, for the trial to have the AHSCT procedure. Now, there are a number of different conditioning regimens that were tested uh, in this trial. Now, these conditioning regimens are that chemotherapy that I talked about. And so essentially, they just tried different uh, combinations of chemotherapy drugs uh, to do that removal or, or deletion of the immune system. Now, I won't go into the detail of what they saw with each of those conditioning regimens. If you do want to know more about that, please do comment below the video and I'd be happy to provide responses to that. But what they were looking at essentially is they went and monitored the EDSS now, this is uh, a way of measuring disability in people living with multiple sclerosis. And they measured that before treatment and then at regular intervals after treatment up until five years post-treatment. And so they saw a number of things. Let's break that down in terms of different participants within the trial. So firstly, let's look at people with relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis. Now, from previous trials on AHSCT, these are the individuals that we think are most likely to benefit. Previous trials have shown that people with relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis who are early in their disease course and have highly inflammatory disease are most likely to get benefits from AHSCT. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that they are the only ones, but they are the ones who have been found to, to be most likely to get benefits from this treatment. And so in this study, they did see that across the cohort of people um, living with relapsing or emitting multiple sclerosis who received the AHSCT treatment, they did see that there was a benefit. This benefit was out to five years. So they saw that that benefit existed for a, for a long time post-treatment. And interestingly, they saw that there was actually a slight decrease in the EDSS of these individuals. So not only was the disease treated in terms of it was kept stable, but there seemed to be some improvement. Now, at the end of this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I think and just share some of my thoughts around that improvement and some questions that remain. But 
I guess the takeaway message from that part of the study is that it seemed that in this cohort of people living with relapsing or remitting multiple sclerosis who had failed a number of other multiple sclerosis therapies, they on, on the whole received benefits from this treatment and it seemed to stabilize and treat the disease effectively out to that five year period. In terms of people living with secondary progressive multiple sclerosis, the results were slightly different. And we need to think a little bit about this in terms of whether these participants had active disease or not active disease. And so what we mean by that is really whether or not they were still experiencing relapses, whether or not there was still an inflammatory component to their disease. And so we would expect with our understanding of the way that AHSCT works as a therapy, that people with active secondary progressive multiple sclerosis, that is that there is still inflammation, may receive benefits from this treatment. And that's something that we've seen with other treatments as well. So in the past, whereas we thought that people with progressive multiple sclerosis may not benefit from the existing therapies, we now know that if there is still active disease, if there is still inflammation, then that is a target that can still be treated by existing therapies. And so we would expect that the same thing might be true uh, with AHSCT. Now, while they didn't necessarily see the same benefits that they saw in relapsing remitting, there was not an improvement across the course um, of the five year period. They didn't see a decrease in the EDSS. There was a stabilization and so again, in my thoughts, I'm just going to share some of my comments around that. So while in terms of what they were looking for, they deemed it to be not a significant benefit. I just want to talk a little bit about what I think about those results coming up slightly later in the video as well. I guess lastly, the other outcome that was uh, looked at in terms of this trial was safety. And so this is something that's really important when we think about stem cell transplantation as a potential therapy for multiple sclerosis. This has probably been one of the biggest holdups um, in terms of seeing this more widely used as well as trying to understand exactly who will benefit because this is a very serious treatment option. Uh, the process of the chemotherapy, the process of having to rebuild that immune system post uh, having the treatment comes with a number of risks and so a number of potential safety concerns. Now this has improved um, over the years, as researchers have found that a more mild chemotherapy can be used and still generate benefits. And so in this trial, again, they saw that the uh, treatment was relatively safe. Now, the main side effects were infections post-treatment. Now, this is common and really not unexpected, considering the fact that we have that period post-chemotherapy where there is a uh, a lacking immune system, the patient or, or person that's had the treatment is quite severely immunocompromised. And so infections were there. However, they found that on the whole, most of these infections cleared up relatively quickly with treatment. It is worth noting that there was one death associated with the treatment. Uh, unfortunately, in this individual, they picked up uh, a case of pneumonia in the hospital uh, and unfortunately they passed away. Uh, but overall, as I said, there were some infection issues that were to be expected. They were um, able to be treated. Um, there was also some cases of secondary autoimmunity, particularly thyroid issues. But again, these were relatively easily managed with treatment once they were detected um, and then did resolve after a short period of time. So what are the outcomes of this trial? I guess, what are my thoughts? So those are the outcomes in terms of what the trial found, um, but I just wanted to share my opinion on some of the things that have been seen there. I guess the, the main takeaway message from this is this really adds more to the growing body of evidence that we have showing that AHSCT can be a really effective one-time long-term um, treatment for people living with multiple sclerosis. So what does that mean? It means that for some people living with multiple sclerosis, having this one bout of AHSCT can cause long-term benefits. And so in this, we saw that in people living with relapsing or remitting multiple sclerosis, there was actually a decrease in EDSS uh, from before the treatment to a period of um, five years post-treatment. And so this was actually, it started, a, the, the average was 3.87. 
uh, EDSS before treatment and after five years, the average was 2.19. So you can see that this has, has decreased slightly. Now, I think one of the things we need to be a little bit careful about here is, is reading into that improvement. As the authors themselves state in the study, there are still some questions around whether there is some sort of a natural improvement that's going to happen based on the relapsing remitting nature of what we're seeing in this disease. So it may be that the people have come off a relapse where they've had some disease worsening and the EDSS might have improved slightly anyway, that it may not necessarily be related to the treatment. However, that's still a question that we, we need to understand better. And obviously this shows that there is potential um, that AHSAT, as well as providing that long-term stability, which is fantastic, um, may also be able to help um, get some improvement. In terms of the secondary progressive multiple sclerosis, as I said, the, the trial sort of decided that there was no significant improvement, but I think we need to be careful about thinking of that as a failure. I think for people living with secondary progressive multiple sclerosis, if a, if a treatment can give stability out to a five year period of time, again, from a single treatment, um, I would argue that potentially that's something that we should be pursuing. Um, while we may not have seen a decrease um, in NESS like we saw with relapse and remitting, I think that long-term stability should be something that we should look into further um, to see whether or not this could be an effective treatment for people living with secondary progressive multiple sclerosis as well. Again, we need to answer that question as whether or not it will only be beneficial for people with active disease. But certainly there's some positive things in there as well for, for progressive MS, which is, which is really important. So a really interesting study, I think AHSCT as it has been for the past couple of years will continue to be a, a big thing in 2022 and hopefully we see further developments in this area. We know that it's an area of interest for our community, so we will continue to publish information on it as soon as it comes to hand. If you've liked the video, please do click on the, the thumbs up icon and let us know. If you have any questions, please do ask them in the comments below and I will make sure that I respond to them. And as I said, if you're not yet following us across any of our channels, please do subscribe uh, to them. Thanks everyone. I look forward to bringing you another research summary in the near future.